If you'd like to start making art with markers, but you don't know where to begin, this video is for you. We're going to cover everything you need to know to get started with markers so that you can confidently purchase the markers that will work best for your artistic needs. We'll cover things like brands, blending, tip shape, costs, and the important differences between water-based markers and alcohol-based markers. Then I'll finish up with my recommendations for the best markers for every budget. Hi, I'm Tania, and in this video, my goal is to help you get started on your new creative adventure. Using markers is a fun and fulfilling activity for artists of any age. If you haven't used markers since you were a kid, you might be surprised to hear that they can even be used to create professional quality art. This is just one of the dozens of coloring books that I've created over the past decade. During this time, I've done a lot of illustrating and experimenting with markers, amassing a collection of over a thousand markers from over a dozen different brands. You can see just a fraction of my collection here. I'm so excited to share with you everything that I've learned about markers, so let's begin! If you want to make art with markers, the first thing to understand is that there are two different types of markers, water-based markers and alcohol-based markers. They each have different qualities and characteristics, which means that they each require different techniques and work best on different paper types. As a side note, there are also other ways of classifying different marker types, but for this video, we're going to keep things simple and focus on water-based markers versus alcohol-based markers. So what does it even mean when I say that markers are either water-based or alcohol-based? Well, it's pretty simple, actually. Basically, in most markers, the colors come from dyes, and those dyes are suspended in a solvent, which is either water or alcohol. After you apply the marker to your paper, the water or alcohol dries, leaving only the color from the dye behind. And because water acts differently than alcohol, these two different types of markers require different techniques to make the most of them. The type of solvent, water versus alcohol, can also affect things like cost, blendability, and permanence. So here's a quick rundown of how these two types of markers differ. Water-based markers are typically cheaper than alcohol markers. This is partly because, traditionally, most cheap markers happen to be water-based, while most artist-grade markers were alcohol-based. However, these days, you can buy very high-quality water-based markers that are specifically made for professional artists and avid enthusiasts. But still, water-based markers do tend to be much cheaper. For example, Ahuhu offers a set of 120 water-based markers for around $43 at the time of this filming, whereas their set of alcohol markers costs more than double that, at $99, so that is quite a big difference in price. Moving on, you'll usually get a wider color range with alcohol markers. For instance, Copic offers a whopping 358 colors, and Ahuhu offers 320. Whereas most water-based markers only offer about a third of that amount of colors. For example, Tombow brush markers come in 108 colors, and Ahuhu water-based markers are available in 160 colors. Another difference is that alcohol markers are more likely to be refillable. So even if they cost more at first, refillable alcohol markers are designed to last longer, and some of them also offer replaceable nibs, so you can use the marker over and over instead of simply throwing it away when it dries out. This can save you money in the long run. Plus, the dye in alcohol markers is usually better quality, giving you better fade resistance. But with that said, do remember that all dye will fade over time, so it's not like using oil paints where the paintings can last for centuries. Marker art just isn't meant to last that long. Another difference between alcohol markers and water-based markers is that alcohol markers dry more quickly because alcohol evaporates more quickly than water. This can be a pro or a con, depending on your art style. Some alcohol markers might have a strong odor, which might bother some people. But for me, unless I put an open alcohol marker right up under my nose, which I never do, I usually don't smell it at all. You can find water-based markers in a wide range of stores, but you may have to go to an art supply store for alcohol markers. Although these days, it is getting easier to find cheap alcohol markers outside of art supply stores. Like here in the US, you can usually find cheap sets of alcohol markers in Target or Barnes & Noble, for example. Water-based markers can warp the paper, while alcohol markers can bleed through the paper. So each marker type works best on certain types of paper. Finally, water-based markers can be reactivated with water, which is great if you're used to working with watercolor paint. On the other hand, alcohol markers are water-resistant. They're also harder to reactivate, which is another thing that can either be a pro or a con, depending on your art style. 
I know all of this might seem really abstract at this stage, so to give you an example from your childhood, at some point you've probably used Crayola markers and Sharpies. Crayola markers are water-based, while Sharpies are alcohol-based. You may have noticed that the colors from Crayola markers fade pretty quickly, while the colors from Sharpies tend to last longer. You've probably also noticed the notorious smell of Sharpies, which is due to the alcohol. So now that you know the differences between the two types of markers, you might be wondering which one is better, water-based or alcohol-based? This is one of those things where it's really up to personal preference, so I suggest that you try them both. This is what I did when I first decided that I wanted to move beyond Crayolas and Sharpies and try true artist quality markers. As helpful as it is to watch these videos and read about markers online, if you're not sure at this stage whether you want to use water-based or alcohol-based markers, then it's time for you to get a first-hand feel for yourself for how they work. These days, you can get both types of markers in small sets, or purchase them individually, so you can try them out without paying a fortune. And then, if you realize you prefer one type of marker over the other, then you can go ahead and buy more of that type of marker. Whichever type of marker you choose, be sure to use the appropriate paper type for that marker. Water-based markers look best on watercolor paper, or any kind of paper that's advertised as being suitable for wet media. Alcohol markers work best on marker paper or Bristol board, but they also work reasonably well on cardstock. Here's an example of both types of markers applied onto cardstock. These are both 3-inch circles. As you can see, the circle colored in with water-based marker looks more streaky on this type of paper, while the other circle, colored in with alcohol marker, has an overall smoother appearance. This doesn't mean that water-based markers are always streaky, though. If you use water-based markers on watercolor paper and then go over it with a wet paintbrush, then that will smooth out any streaks. So this is a good example of how paper type does matter, as does technique, for both types of markers. It would actually be unfair to judge the markers if they're being used on a paper type that it's not well suited for. Another thing to note in this example is that although the alcohol marker circle is smoother on cardstock than the water-based marker circle, the alcohol marker circle is not completely uniform in that there are some slight variations in saturation, with some areas appearing slightly lighter or darker than other areas. I personally like that kind of look because in my opinion it has a nice organic appearance. And if you want to smooth it out to make it more uniform, you can do that by applying more layers. Now let's move on to blending. You can blend with both types of markers, but the techniques that you use will be very different. Blending your markers is what can really take your marker art to the next level. When we used markers when we were kids, we mainly did flat coloring. That is, we would just put down one layer of color in one spot and then move on to the next area. As an adult, you can still create awesome art just by doing flat coloring, like in these two examples from my coloring books. But if you really want to make the most of your markers, then blending can really make an artwork come to life. The results can look so stunning and professional that you wouldn't even think it was made with markers. For example, here are two artworks that I created using alcohol markers. For the mandala, I took advantage of the beautiful blending ability of alcohol markers to create luminescent gradients. For the cherries, I was able to create smooth blends with alcohol markers to create a sense of vibrant realism. If you want to learn step-by-step -step how to color in this mandala and these cherries using alcohol markers, check out my ultimate guide to using alcohol markers. I'll post a link to it below this video. Printable line art is included, as well as color names and color swatches, so you can follow along with me as I demonstrate in real time how to color these in. So as you've seen, I really like using alcohol markers, but water-based markers are also capable of creating beautiful blends. Here's an example of water-based markers on watercolor paper, before blending. Now here's how these same circles look after blending them with water. So you can see that adding water to water-based markers can blend the colors together, smoothing them out to create a lovely gradient. There are also some other ways that you can blend water-based markers, such as using a blender marker, like this one by Tombow, or by using a blending palette. You can also achieve a certain amount of blending by layering water-based markers next to and on top of each other, but in my opinion, the results tend to be much better if you use water to blend the colors together, because then you're making the most of the distinctive properties of water-based markers. The process of blending with alcohol markers is a lot simpler, because you only need to use the markers to blend, so you don't need any extra supplies like a paintbrush or water or a special blender marker or a blending palette. 
To blend with alcohol markers, you only need to use the markers, which you apply directly onto the paper and blend by layering colors on top of and next to each other. Here's an example of two raindrop shapes made of similar colors. The one on the left was created by using water to blend water-based markers together, while the one on the right was created by blending alcohol markers together. As you can see, both types of markers can create beautiful blends that are seamless and gradual as they transition from light to dark, or from one color to another. I like how both of these turned out, but I find that blending with water-based markers can be much more unpredictable than blending with alcohol markers, because the water can react with the dye in unexpected ways that can be difficult to control. Some people really like this unpredictable quality, which is also a feature of using watercolor paints. But if you prefer a more predictable experience with blending, then you might prefer to use alcohol markers. In general, for each marker type, the process of blending has its own ups and downs. So it's not like one is better than the other, it's really just a matter of personal preference. So by now, you have a pretty good idea of the differences between alcohol markers and water-based markers. So let's move on to other things that you need to consider before you buy your first set of art markers. Let's talk about tip shapes. Before you purchase your first set of art markers, you'll need to decide which type of tip shape that you want, because the tip shape will greatly impact your experience of using the markers. Markers come in several different tip shapes, brush tips, chisel tips, fine tips, and bullet tips. Tips are also often referred to as nibs. And note that these terms are not standard across all brands. So for example, some manufacturers might use the phrase fine tip to refer to a tip that's actually more similar in appearance to a bullet tip. Here's an overview of each tip type. Brush tips are my absolute favorite because they're the most versatile. The point can be used to create thin strokes, which is perfect for detailed work. And the side of the brush can also be used to fill in large areas. The brush tip is flexible, which means you can also use it to create lines where part of the line is thinner and part of the line is thicker, all without lifting your marker from the paper. These types of lines are called variable width strokes, and they can be very expressive with art making. Brush markers are typically more expensive than other types, but for some brands, the tips can be replaced when they become worn and the ink can be refilled, so you can use the same marker over and over. All in all, I highly recommend purchasing markers with brush tips, especially if you want to blend with them. Moving on to the chisel tip. The chisel tip is very common across different brands. You can use different edges of the chisel for different purposes. The wide, flat side is great for laying down lots of color, while the pointy side can be used to make thinner strokes, though usually not as thin or precise as you can achieve with brush or fine tip markers. To be honest, I rarely use the chisel tips on my markers. I only use them when I want to fill in a large area quickly, like a large background area, for example. But that's just me, so your needs and style may be different. Now let's talk briefly about the fine tip. This is just like what you'd find on a technical pen that architects use. These tips are fantastic for fine details and patterning, but very impractical for larger blocks of color. Finally, the bullet tip is a good all-around general tip. It can be used to fill in small areas and to create consistent line widths. But sometimes, depending on the brand, the bullet tip might not be quite small enough to fill in super small areas. And when it comes to filling in larger areas, filling them in with a bullet tip is really slow and tedious. As you've just seen, you can achieve a variety of strokes with any marker tip, which is pretty cool. However, each tip type has its own strengths and weaknesses, so the best marker tip for you will ultimately boil down to your personal preference and the type of art that you want to create. One really cool thing, if you're interested in alcohol markers, is that most artist quality alcohol markers are double-ended. They feature a central ink reservoir with different tips on each end, so you get to enjoy the best of both worlds. The most common combinations are a brush tip on one end and a chisel tip on the other end, or a bullet tip on one end and a chisel tip on the other end. It's not as common for water-based markers to be double-ended, although when I get to my recommendations, I'll show you a brand that is double-ended. Most water-based markers just have brush tips. Bullet tip markers tend to be cheaper than brush tip markers, so it can be tempting to buy the bullet tips. But if you want to create smooth blends with your markers, then I really suggest that you get brush tip markers. While you can blend with the bullet tip and the chisel tip, it's just so much easier if you're using the brush tip. The brush tips are definitely my favorite. I often create an entire artwork using only the brush tips. 
But the cool thing about markers is that they can be combined. So you don't need to do an entire artwork with the same tip or brand. You can mix and match as you see fit. For instance, you can lay down large blocks of color with a brush tip or chisel tip, and then add details on top with a fine or bullet tip. So now let's talk about brands. These days, there are a ton of different marker brands out there, so you have a lot to choose from. I know it can be overwhelming, especially if you're brand new to markers and you're not sure what to get. So let me tell you about my favorite brands. These are all brands that I own and use. This is not a sponsored video, and I haven't been paid for any of these recommendations. They're all just based on my own experiences with these brands. I'll post links to all of my recommended marker brands below this video. When it comes to alcohol markers, my top recommendations are Copic, Prismacolor, Blick, Ahuhu, and Artex. I mostly use Copic sketch markers. Here are a couple examples of artwork that I created using Copic markers. You can actually learn how to color in the owl step by step in my ultimate guide to using alcohol markers, which I'll also link to below this video. You might have already heard about Copic markers because they're really popular and they're really expensive. Copics are the original alcohol markers, the first to be invented and come on the market over 35 years ago. For a long time, they dominated the market because there wasn't much competition. But they are really expensive, so for a long time, for many people, alcohol markers were just out of reach due to the cost. But in the last few years, the demand for alcohol markers has really exploded, partly due to the popularity of adult coloring books and manga. So now you can get alcohol markers for a lot cheaper. Prismacolor and Blick are both excellent options for alcohol markers. They're not as expensive as Copics, but they're considered professional quality, and they're manufactured by well-established art brands. You can buy them open stock, which means individually, so you can buy just a few and try them out. Another option for total beginners who want to try alcohol markers is to buy a set from Ahuhu or Artex. A few years ago, both of these brands sent me complimentary sets of their markers to try out, and I've really enjoyed using them. Here are some examples of artwork that I created with them. One big benefit of buying a set by a brand like Ahuhu or Artex is that you'll have enough alcohol markers to make a lot of really nice blends. So this can help you get the full experience of what it's like to use alcohol markers. That's why these sets are a really great option for beginners. When it comes to water-based markers, my recommendations are Tombow, Ahuhu, Akashi Asai, Sakura Koi, and Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pens. The cheapest by far are the Ahuhu markers, where you can get a set of 120 markers for around $43. The next cheapest are these Akashi Asai watercolor brush pens, which are made in Japan, and as far as I can see, they're only available in sets. A set of 30 currently costs $40, so compare that to the Ahuhu water-based markers, where you can get quadruple the amount of markers for about the same price. For the other three brands I mentioned, Tombow, Sakura Koi, and Faber-Castell Pitt, you can purchase sets of different sizes, or you can purchase the markers individually. These three brands of markers are considered to be more high quality than the other two, and they're definitely more expensive. One cool thing about Tombows is that they're double-ended, which isn't as common with water-based markers as it is with alcohol markers. One end has a pointy brush tip, and the other end has a fine point tip. One more thing to point out about my water-based marker recommendations is that Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens are actually pigment-based, unlike all of the other markers that I've mentioned, which are all dye-based. Pigments last much longer than dyes, so the colors in Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens are designed to last much longer, which is one reason why they're more expensive. I freely admit that I have way less experience with using water-based markers just because I tend to favor using alcohol markers. But even so, my recommendations here are based on markers that I myself own and use. I'm sure there are many other excellent brands of water-based markers and alcohol-based markers out there, but hopefully these suggestions will give you an idea of where to get started and what to look for when buying your first set of markers. If you want even more information about markers, check out my website, where I've written detailed reviews for various brands, and you can also see more examples of artwork that I created with them. You'll find the link below this video. Whether you're a total beginner who just wants to relax with markers on a coloring book, or maybe you're a trained art professional eager to learn a new medium, either way, I hope this video has helped you gain an understanding of what's out there when it comes to markers, and inspired you to explore this fun medium.
So what do you think? Are you excited to try markers? Let me know in the comments and let me know which brand you want to buy. After you buy them and use them, I'd love to hear what you think of them. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please click the like button because that helps me know that you found value in this video, which encourages me to create more videos like this for you. If you want to see more of my art tips, techniques, and time lapses, subscribe to my channel so that you never miss a thing. Here are two more art videos that you might really enjoy because they show you from start to finish what's possible when it comes to making art with markers. So check those out and I'll see you next time.